College Match Day was designed to showcase some of the nation's top programs. So far, mission accomplished with numerous memorable moments made. Yet some matchups just seem to elevate the intrigue. Like tonight's showdown, an inner service academy clash between some of this country's finest student athletes, not to mention bravest men and women, all seeking a victory for bragging rights. Air Force versus Navy, as college tennis takes a decidedly patriotic turn, it just doesn't get any better. A fabulous rendition by a local elementary school choir to ring in the national anthem and get us underway on college match day in Lake Nona, Florida. What an opportunity to witness some of the best athletes in the country at the collegiate level who also happen to represent our military services. It's going to be a fantastic evening at the USTA National T Tennis Campus, and we are happy that you have chosen to join us, tennis fan. Hello and welcome. It is an absolutely stunning day once again in South Florida, Central Florida, mind you, here on the outskirts of Orlando at this national campus and a terrific environment that is anticipating standing room only here as Kevin Skinner, Julie Childress and Cam Lickle are here with you. Well, it's going to be fantastic. Air Force versus Navy, collegiate tennis. Both of my cohorts here have established themselves with terrific careers during their tenure there. Now, this is a military all-academy battle, but we will prove that chivalry is not dead. We'll turn to the artist formerly known as Julie Weiss in her playing days <laughs> at Colorado Springs. Julie, this is exciting stuff. You bring the two armed services together to battle, and they're going to leave it all out on the court. Absolutely. Leaving it out on the court is what we do best, and I think all academies do best because they want to win. And with this being the first time to play each other, they want to win. Yeah, it is the first ever meeting. We'll talk about the history between the schools, but Air Force and Navy have never met in women's tennis prior. This is the first go round. But somebody who knows a thing or two about facing Armed Services Academies previously is a two-time captain at the Naval Academy, much like Julie was at the Air Force Academy, <laughs> Cam Lickle. And Cam, oh, yeah. that palpable energy that comes with it, it really feeds into what the players want to do and produce well here. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can feel this. This takes on an entirely different meaning when you have these inter-service academy rivalries. You're going to sleep a little a little earlier, you're eating healthier, you're practicing a little harder as the day comes to. Uh, you're competing for alpha supremacy here of uh, the Inter Academy, so uh, takes on a lot. Yeah. And so the scores as things start to progress over on court number four, doubles one underway, and things starting to get real interesting between the top teams. Some incredible hitting out there with the men's. On court four, Air Force. Justin Waldman and Nick Vroman taking on Navy's Luke Gardner and Sasha Panyan. Ooh. Well left by Waldman, the senior from Marietta, Georgia, as he tries to help his partner out. Navy, though, has gotten the upper hand to, to this point. We're on court number six. Just to update you there, they're up 3-2 as Garner and Payan try to get the break for two all here on court number four. Garner there is uh, Coach Garner's son, the younger son of, uh, of Coach, and the older son, Finn Garner, is the captain of the team. He, unfortunately, he was the number one player for Navy, suffered an ACL injury in the fall, um, forcing everybody to have to step up.
once again, just terrific teamwork as Waldman able to step up, just deliver that little glancing sort of angled volley. And another break point saved by Broman, who on deciding point here may just be able to extend to 3 1. Great oh. first serve. That is a big hold. That was a big hold, absolutely. Air Force feeling good in men's doubles one as they lead currently on four of the six courts and tied on court five. So Air Force right now in the enviable position. Well, actually, court two has just gone to three Great two balance. in favor of Navy. So that has changed things in favor of the mids. Air Force really does a great job of um, doing different formations on their serves, trying to mix it up, not doing the same thing over and over again, not giving the same look repeatedly to their opponents on the women's double side of things. And that's one of the things that Coach Gidley really, um, really focuses on for them is the different formations that they can have and that communication of knowing where your teammate is going out there on the court. Luke Gardner not able to help his cause. As mentioned, the sophomore, the younger brother of two of another brother on this team. In fact, there's two sets of brothers on Navy. The, the Wynn brothers are also here in Lake Nona. Luke now just looking to salvage a hold here. Struggling at Love 30. Wind is wreaking havoc on the mids. It's tough. I mean, it really can be a nemesis for a lot of people. Well, this is when you gotta kind of take a step back, kind of say, okay, I'm not gonna play the way I normally play, right? And you, you take a little bit off it and you just play your opponent the right way mm -hmm. versus trying to hit, you know. What you know 10. you can hit every time. Correct. It's not what needs to happen in the situation. There you uh, go. Wow. All right. Well, uh, it was an impeccable return. It's just a great volley from Sasha Panyan there to keep things in play for Navy, and they ultimately come away with a point. Sasha's really stepped up uh, since the captain went down, Finn, and uh, has taken the number one spot for Navy. Go. Oh, what a shot down the line that was. Beautiful. I love that a coach can come out and coach you in the middle of a point in college tennis. That is like one of my favorite things because it really can change a momentum for a player. You're not doing well, your coach comes out and talks to you. I, I love that coaching aspect of it. Was Coach Kim able to to come out and, and address you in much the same way? Did you take a lot from? So she, they were not able to come out and walk on the court like this. Yeah, they could come down in between games, but they couldn't come walk out on the court. I love that they can talk to you between points. It'll really be a, a case of Chris Garner trying to talk to his squad. It doubles one there, down a 4-1 deficit to Air Force, who's in control there as they are on women's court doubles three on court three. Air Force up 3-1. Navy up on uh, men's two and three. Now we're on court number six, though, is where Navy is really hoping they can find a way to seize the lead. Well, they got the lead. See if they can seize the match by holding on to it. Currently, Legaspi and Wynn up 4-2 on Deaton and Gardner of Air Force. Here is our peek in. And it'll cut the lead to 4-3. Nicholas Wynn is one of the smartest people on the court today. 
We're going to show you the women's scores just to keep you updated on how things are progressing already and things moving very quickly as we showed you in women's doubles three three one in favor of Air Force two all at Fitch and Odom versus John Sandebaum over on court number one in women's doubles one and we haven't had a chance yet to peek in on Kotuna and Floating versus Akola and Chandri but it is Navy up 4-2 on that court. And here is the men's scores from courts four, five, and six. Roman and Waldman still in a commanding position in men's doubles one. 4-1 lead may be insurmountable at this point. They have had the answer since the start on how to deal with the win and how to attack proficiently. Yeah, breezy night in Central Florida on the outskirts of Orlando, Lake Nona. Turn our attention towards court number four, Air Force up 4-1. Good turnout. Last year, Air Force took on Army here in this competition. They estimated crowds of about 1,500. They gave away free tickets to this contest here. They're not going to quite reach that level, but it is a pretty frenzied group of fans for both academies that have come out. There you go, boys. Making their making first returns there, putting some pressure back on Air Force. Absolutely, going back to basics, like you said. Yeah. So important. Pressure's on Air Force if they if they get a, if they get broken here. Absolutely. Court one, Air Force women up three two, take the lead. Yeah, remember they were a, point, a couple points away with break points to go up three love. They're mm -hmm. just hanging on after reassuming the lead over there. Navy up 4-3 on court two. All tied up in men's doubles two on court five, three apiece. Right now with men's one competition looking to go the way of Air Force, it's Garner and Panyan who are trying to scrap their way back in. What a play. What a play. Very clutch. Giving them an opportunity here. Great hands. Oh. There we go. Sasha putting pressure. Tough return, absolutely. And that gets the lead cut in half. It's 4-2 in favor of Air Force as Navy gives himself a little push to get back in the mix. Well, the first match that looks like it's heading towards its conclusion is over on court number six in men's doubles three. Navy has assumed a 5-3 lead, having just broken. That just might be the match that finishes things off first and gives Navy just that half chance to get themselves this doubles point. On court number six, men's doubles three. I'd like to see Navy making more first serves here. So a chance to peek in on that. What could be the final touches for Navy on court number six in the far end? Is Navy out in front? 5-3, just three points away from taking that opening set. Legaspi and win. Very close to giving the midshipmen a bit of optimism on the men's side. Absolutely. With the other, well, court two, very tight. Some incredible points on the men's side. Here we are, court number six. This is our chance now to see this action and how Air Force responds here on the precipice of dropping this set.
Eaton and Gardner, a talented duo, just haven't been able to find their way into the rhythm against Navy at this point. Needed to get that point started. Give it an opportunity just to be able to win the point. You can't get the ball over. You, there's no opportunity. You don't give yourself a chance. No. Nicholas Wynn, the junior, elder brother of Nathan, also on the team from McLean, Virginia. Trying to seal the deal here, but a big return. There you go, absolutely. Get it over the net. Give yourself a shot. I love the fact, though, in this format where your buddies are on the court one and you're cheering and they're cheering back to you and they're firing you up knowing that something big's about to Absolutely. Happen. Looking over, giving you a big let's go. It's awesome. Oh, and it'll be a deciding point which would result in the set if Navy can convert here after Wynn is able to save the break point. Talk about a big pressure point right here. <laughs> Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you guys would think this is important to get a first serve in. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll defer to you, Almost Cam, on that. Simple. Very simple. <laughs> wow. I didn't think that shot was going to make it over. just kept going and going. Mid's still alive. They save a match point. Cadet's still alive. Sorry, Cadet's still alive That's as right. the Mid's had their chance to wrap it up. But yeah, Air Force back in the flow. You're right. That's an <laughs> unbelievable point. Oh. And why this is such a dynamic format, too, because right in front of us, some exciting tennis going on. But looking at the far end, it was just <laughs> nip and tuck. Every, everywhere around, we see some just incredible points happening. Great the, hands, great volleys. The Mid's had chances here. Oh, he could have gone down the line right there. This is just the last 10 sh strokes of a, an absolutely fantastic rally on deciding point. Air Force puts a lot more pressure, though, on Navy. If you watch uh, how they move when the ball's on the other side of the net, mm -hmm. they're moving closer to the net. I think that's what caused that error there. Mm -hmm. um, Navy will look to return the favor, break their way to victory. <laughs> the only deciding points or if there's someone else is serving, like it's about to go five, four, four on two. You want to, if only if it goes to the deciding point, right? Goodness, what a great get by Air Force on uh, women's court three here. What a point. Oh. The level is picked up here on every court. Yeah, it's, and it's getting down to the, <laughs> the, the real nitty gritty here, isn't it? I mean, this is where the, the proof is in what you got as far as your fortitude mentally and physically. All the courts starting to reach the end. Court five, Navy up 5-3. They will serve for the victory. Here on court six, it's really, I mean, elevated the level of play from both teams. Air Force is doing a great job moving in and closing that net. Yeah, if you notice, you have two Air Force players at the net yeah. and two Navy players back. I mean, it's tough to compete against that. Yeah. Oh. Women's doubles on court number one. Air Force will serve for the set and therefore take half of what's necessary for the doubles point. There you go, That's boys. into the net. Smart, he mixed it up. Threw a lob up in the air, mm -hmm. gotten to the point.
Great gets over there by Navy, keeping that point alive. But Air Force, again, both players up at the net. Yeah, it's tough to try to lob in these conditions to get it over both. Gardner is 6'2", and Deaton is 5'11". So you're talking about some big guys <laughs> and the wind's not acting in your favor. That's right. And it looks like they have a little bit of ups. So now you're dealing with an even taller guy out there. Navy two points away right next door on court five from taking that set. Five and it's all five now. all here in front of us. So things really get down. Court five right next door. Navy with their chance, two points away. Take one more look at the deciding point that got to five all. Pumpelli and Seagraves making moves towards taking this set on court five, facing Kirsten and Moore of Air Force. So Navy split up their doubles teams today. Normally it's Pompelli and Wynn playing together. They decided to kind of test it out to see who they could rely on come springtime, just to see how they react to this right. type of environment. Like it could work out. It's set point, which would result in taking this set, and it's long. Air Force still in the mix. Absolutely. But again, another big point right here. Talk about pressure. Deciding point in men's doubles two that could result in Navy taking the set. Oh, that was That's a good it. play. Yep. Navy's good got set. it. So they take the men's doubles two, which gives them the half chance to take the doubles point, though. Air Force leads. 5-3 on court four, and it's all even five apiece on court number six. Meanwhile, on the women's side of things, courts one and two, Air Force is just a couple of points from taking both of those contests and giving the cadets the doubles point in women's play. And that's too long. And Air Force has the men's double on court number four. The one team so takes their split. set. Yep, we're split now. And that all makes down to it, court six. Yeah, all of the marbles for the men's doubles point now comes down to just the one court, court number six. Great ups by Air Force there to save that. Absolutely. Just keeping it in play, not trying to do too much with it. Far end, court number six, where everything is going to rest in the hopes for both academies to get this men's doubles point. Meanwhile, for the women, already finished on court number two and on Doubles no court number one, Fitch and Odom had a chance to wrap things up. Not done so as of yet. <laughs> Brian, can you hear Kevin? And so the men's doubles point could just come down to this. Navy will grab that very important first point if they can convert match point here. Legaspi, win. Win's taking, the, or Legaspi's taking this return. That was unbelievable. Wow. The Gatsby hit an unbelievable return there, and what a clutch volley. Going to do it all again. Yeah, second match point to Absolutely. try to give Navy the men's doubles point. While the women still continue to battle on over on court number one, we'll get over there in a moment. This is crucial. Are we tie-break bound? 
Or does Navy get the men's doubles point? kind of exciting already. This it's just up the ante a bit. It's very exciting now. <laughs> and so we'll go to the tie break format. First to 10. And for the men's doubles point, it's on the line right now. Air Force and Navy. Wow, what a shot down the line. That was incredible. If that's what we're in store for for the rest of this tie break, we should just sit back, put our feet up, and enjoy. Absolutely. Cam, can you get some popcorn ready? Uh, yeah, good. Put your feet up and get some popcorn. Come on. Maybe some nachos. Yeah. Oh, now good. you're speaking my language. Huh? Muy bueno. <laughs> Meanwhile, if things aren't exciting enough on court number six. Air Force is two points away from taking the women's doubles point on court number three in women's three doubles. I started saying it earlier, but Nicholas Wynn might be the smartest guy out on the court today. Yeah, you did start to mention he that. He has Why a 4.0 GPA all the way up through his junior year. Wow. All A's. That's impressive. Unbelievable. Especially knowing the course load that you take and the diversity of your, of your core courses. That is not easy. Well, there's a little rivalry on the team, too. Christian Pompelli uh, has, I think, believe, two A minuses. <laughs> so, oh, no. And, and so <laughs> they compete for who's got a, uh, a smarter brain. And it's match point in women's doubles to give Air Force the point if they convert here. Now, kudos for giving them a fair call, but there's nothing worse than losing a point twice. Absolutely. So the attention and the focus skews all the way to the west, or excuse me, to the east side, mind you, court number six, the far end. Deaton Gardner versus the Gaspy and Wynn, Nicholas Wynn, mind you, of Navy. They'll swap ends after the opening six points. Again, first to 10, win by two. And I go back to your thoughts with Nicholas Wynn and his 4.0 all the way through and pump belly in there. If you put those two on the same team, I mean, is that is that are they too smart for their own good? <laughs> it, it, it might be the smartest doubles team in college America, right? It's just it's just it's an incredible feat. Um, you know, that's not a very easy thing to attain. Absolutely. But you both can attest to, and they are student athletes. I mean, the scholar level at the two academies is through the roof and the course load, which you have to take in. There's no give. It's not like you take a semester off to try and, and focus on the athletic portion and then redo it in the summer scholastically. And it's not like you get to just take one or two classes. You probably have, at a minimum, four classes you're taking every semester. And that's probably on the light side, probably five to six classes on is more regular. Yeah. Men and women both move down to cheer on the uh, remaining court that's on. This is the greatest part of college tennis right here. Oh, it's so awesome. Fans starting to stream down as well. It's just going to be packed. The, the Collegiate Center might tilt a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody heading out east. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I will take that all day long. <laughs> well, it is a neutral site competition and Air Force is technically the home team, so there's no home court advantage on that touch, but boy, was that exquisite feel. Absolutely. Little kiss off the nylon doesn't hurt either. The entire Air Force team has really great hands. Thank you. Yeah, I will wow, say, we've been watching that. some practices. They, they all across the board have really good hands. Thank you. You know, I, at least from the women's perspective, I will say it's something that I know Coach Gidley works on very hard uh, with the women's team. And just in watching the men and their and their movement forward, obviously I feel like it's it's spread across the men and the women of, 
all right, we want to move forward and we want to have good hands. And I think that that's obviously something the men work on as well. Potentially why doubles became one of my favorite things to play. Here we go. It's been nip and tuck throughout. I mean, neither really has been able to pull away from the other, but Navy just ekes out a slight advantage. Philip Deaton from Seattle, Washington, a freshman. Try to get back on even terms. Played, gentlemen. Absolutely. And Great there match. it is. It's taken by Navy. They're able to prevail in the tie break. And boy, does that set a nice tone for Navy's hopes to be able to pull off the victory and remain perfect against Air Force in the history of their competition. So how's that for some fun? If you take those six matches to art, another look at match point and the Brainiac himself, <laughs> Nicholas Wynn, right there to get it done for Great his team. Great move forward. That's what you do. Smart and incredibly athletic. You like that combination. You can say that just about anybody on either of these academies teams. But it is men's doubles going the way of Navy. They take the doubles point. And on the other side for the women's side, it is the cadets from Air Force who are able to prevail to take the one love lead on the women's side of things. So that will now set the stage for what is gonna be the most dynamic tennis action that you'll find anywhere. 12 consecutive singles matches taking place all at one time. So you know what, this is a collegiate matchup, but it's also so much more, as you both are all too well aware. It's not just college sports that is taking place right here, but these student athletes are next level special because they will serve our country in a way that many will never have the chance to even remotely understand. Let's take a moment to honor these service people who do so for their country. When you see them on court. You see college tennis players. Running the baseline. Rushing the net. Backhands. Forehands. But look more closely. And how, how they serve. serve. Integrity first. Service before self. Excellence in all we do. Honor. Courage. Commitment. They represent the best of America. Future leaders. Answering the call. Willing to put it all. On the line. Cryptologic warfare officer. Cyber officer. Naval submarine officer. Aircraft maintenance officer. Marine Corps officer. Intelligence officer. United in their mission. Tonight, for a few hours, they compete on opposite sides of the net. Go Air Force, beat Navy! Go Navy, beat Air Force! All right, brother, here go. we go. Go Navy! Go Navy, beat, beat Air, Air Force! Go Air Force! Go Sylvia, go Navy, crush Air Force! I did both. Go Air Force, beat go Navy. Navy! Go Navy, beat Air Force! Go Navy, go Air Force! Go Navy. Go, go Air Force. When it's over, they'll reunite in their mission and remind us all what it means to, to truly serve. serve. Well, it's time now, tennis fan, as we take a break between doubles and singles to play a game of guess what doesn't belong here. And that's me. <laughs> and amongst us, we have some very special guests, the superintendents from both the Air Force Academy and the Naval Academy. It's a pleasure to welcome in Vice Admiral Sean Buck. Thanks for being with us. And Lieutenant General Richard Clark. Gentlemen, yesterday, my understanding, you were at the Pentagon. Suddenly you find yourself in Lake Nona, Florida to watch some tennis. First of all, welcome. And second, let's talk a little bit about the special nature of what it is to be a service academy, what it brings. These are great student athletes, but they mean oh so much more. 
Well, our hats off uh, from both our schools to the United States Tennis Association for hosting us down here. This is a great experience for both our schools, for our student bodies, for our tennis teams. Uh, it's phenomenal, and I'll tell you what, the weather out in Colorado Springs and the weather in Washington, D.C., we're very, very happy to be here. Absolutely, absolutely, and I, I can't echo it any better. Thank you for having us, and uh, watching these young people compete what we all have to realize is what they're doing is they're preparing to go out and defend our country. And it just makes us so proud. I know I speak for Sean to watch them get out there on the fields of friendly strife and really prepare for their future. But they're doing it in a great way, and I love the competition. And meanwhile, if you were with us as we began this day, uh, it was a pretty exciting moment. Anytime that the couple of T6s fly overhead and honor you at the start of a collegiate sport, it's an honor. It's our honor now to welcome the wingmen from the flyover from earlier today, Lieutenant Matt Galvin over in Stay between down. here. And it's also Lieutenant Alex Golizzo here that is joining us here in our booth. Guys, hey, first of all, does it still give you any chills to fly over? Because I'll tell you what, I got goosebumps still. And it's been an hour or so later. Absolutely. This is such a great honor. We uh, got to fly down on Friday. It's great to be here. I was here a couple years ago playing in this match or getting to watch play this match. And now being here, getting to do the flyovers, like it's a great honor. It's, good. it's great for the guys. And Alex, in your, from your position, are you able to take a little peek? I can't get a sense of the cockpit there and how you're, what you're able to see. I'm locked in on him. <laughs> I'm just locked in on him the whole time. Yeah. Mac, you, you were here for uh, college match day in 2019, taking on Army. You know what it's like to be, and you were captain as well of the uh, Air Force Academy tennis team. This has to be kind of a nice full circle moment for you to come back as now in your service career, being able to watch these competitors. Absolutely. It's great to go show the next generation of players, like what you get to do after your service, you know, because everyone goes to the Air Force Academy for one reason, it's for service, while also getting to play tennis. So it's great to see kind of hopefully, what the future generation gets to go and do. And Alex, are, are you much of a tennis affection? I don't know what your tennis resume is. Are you also just following his lead? Yeah, I'm just following his lead on that. Maybe uh, <laughs> maybe Mac and I can hit the courts uh, this weekend, too. Well, you, you're still keeping up your game, though. You were out there this morning uh, playing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Got to hang out with a couple of my former teammates, getting to hit some balls around. It's a ton of fun. So, guys, I don't know if you know the history. Well, you would know this from your time playing. It hasn't been favorable for Air Force against Navy previously, mm -hmm. although only five meetings in almost six decades. But the good news today, the women who are meeting for the first time took the women's doubles points. So can you go put your player hat mm -hmm. back on or maybe even act yeah. as a coach? <laughs> what do you think so far to give uh, the cadets a chance today? It's great. I know. I mean, I saw it's great for the women's team. to like, snag that first point in the men's team. I know a quick or uh, a third set tiebreaker. But... Uh, we're a strong singles team. They're a strong singles team. So I think coming out, uh, starting out strong in singles, being able to win a couple points early on would be awesome. It's been a fantastic start for the cadets. A 7-1 and one start, I believe, is the best start since 2005. It gives Dan Oosterhaus and the, and the team really a lot of confidence and belief in themselves. Absolutely. Well, i got to say, I've never had a flyover for a tennis match. <laughs> so what, what were you guys thinking about during your flyover? We're going to get a chance to take a look at it so yeah that's me it's us and the uh, other aircraft just trying to stay in position it was great to do another low pass in the second time uh we basically we're just trying to make sure we're on time making the flyover look good and in position the entire time tell you what you guys timed it perfectly the elementary school choir that was there was just hitting the last little note they held on a little longer but <laughs> there you guys were it was perfect they it was it awesome it, it really was thank you and you guys, you guys come out of, from Missouri, I believe, is where you guys are based. Mississippi. Where you, sorry, Mississippi. I knew it began with an M. I'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't graduate from either of the academies. But, uh, yeah, you guys came a long way to be a part of this, and uh, it was really a thrill to have you with us. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Yeah. Quick shout-out to the 37th Flying Train Squadron and the 14th Flying Training Wing for letting us come down here, specifically E-Flight, uh, for allowing us to be able to take a jet down and be a part of this great moment. So yeah. thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Our Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Great thanks to for have your you service. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate thanks for your service. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for all you guys do. Lieutenant Matt Galvin and Lieutenant Alex Colizzo doing their part to join us. Over on the north side, it's the men's singles competition across six courts, and we take a peek in on singles three competition for Navy in the near court. That's Luke Garner, a sophomore, younger brother to Finn. Both happen to be son of the coach. I asked Coach what it's like to coach two of his sons. And I said, Does it, do, you, do you default and give it to the assistant coach because you don't want to, you know, 
not say the right thing or mm -hmm. treat them differently. And he said, nope. You know, when we go out there, they're just one of the fellas. And I treat them as such. That's great that you can both you and your children, even though they're not children anymore, can actually turn it off like that and not necessarily, you know, you breathe wrong. Ugh, what are you trying to, you know, tell me? But you can turn it on and off like that, that relationship. I think that's really special. Well, here it comes. Coach, coach, dad and son talking about how, how to tackle this mountain. And we take a peek in on singles one competition over on court number seven. This is Air Force's Nick Broman, a 6'2 junior, putting the ball in play against Navy's Sasha Panyan. Broman, a member of the Grim Reapers, the 31st squadron for Air Force, as he tries to give himself a chance to get to two all. Funny watching Navy really moving forward. Bro Broman's staying away, though, from Panyon's uh, forehand. Panyon has an unbelievably wicked forehand and a heck of a serve, but he's playing his backhand predominantly there. <laughs> Sasha really stepped up. Finn Garner was the number one player, as I said uh, earlier, and had an ACL injury in the fall. And... Uh, Sasha stepped up and filled that number one spot very well. What a wicked forehand. Yeah, that is a no-go zone. You ought to just sort of rope that off, right, and say, D do not trespass here, because Panyon can really make opponents pay. But you know, it, sometimes, though, attacking an opponent's strength can really get somebody down. So, right, so I don't know necessarily what, what coach had given uh, Roman his tactics, but let's say you came out and you wanted to play his forehand. And if you were able to break down Panyon's forehand, and he knows that the forehand's coming, and now his strength isn't working. So, you know, tactically, you can go one way or another. You can play the weakness, which looks like with the tactics that, they, that they've that they implemented, but it could go either way. Talking about brothers, uh, Vroman, actually, his brother plays tennis, but he's over, actually, at West Point, a senior this year. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So he has them spread out versus Navy's got two sets of brothers on their team. Yeah, his brother Andrew competes for West Point. And for Roman, here's a chance for him to actually uh, get to two apiece. Yeah, the Navy man for Vroman, he's one of three juniors on a squad. Excuse me, he's the lone junior on the Air Force squad amongst the nine-man roster. Very youthful. Cadet roster featuring six freshmen and sophomores combined. Roman and there's a pair of seniors to go along with it. So there is a, already with this terrific start, there's room for even further growth as they go forward. Absolutely. And it looks that way on both teams, on both Navy and Air Force this year, really on the men and the women's side of things. Well, the Navy men have three freshmen at the bottom, mm -hmm. right, and as, as does Air Force. Right. So I think that this is really going to come down to, you know, which freshman has the nerves. Yep. And of which creates a nice rivalry for the next few years. Oh, it's Having, you know, the freshmen growing together here, it's it's great. Well, this is especially why you don't want to lose this because then it'll start like a bad trend. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, I hate to admit this. There was a guy, Reed Hagman, who had my number at Colgate. Uh -huh. And we had to, I had to play him every year. And I just <laughs> did not look forward to it, ever. He just played me so well. <laughs> And you know what? I actually played him 
in a uh, tennis match just for fun about 20 years later and took major celebratory <laughs> kudos from it. <laughs> Finally gotcha. Doesn't matter when and where, I'll take it. Tried to disguise that little backhand drop shot, but just couldn't clear the net. Canyon back and forth here early against Roman. Beautiful. Great example of just settling after the disappointment on the previous shot that he's just able to go right back to work. He's got really good technique on that backhand volley. Remember, it's best of three sets now in this singles format, so these 12 matches are going to be prolonged. It's not the same as it was in doubles where the set, just a one set needed to take the match. Get the feeling these guys are just feeling each other out here at the, at the early start, right? Dan Oosterhaus at the helm for the Falcons in his 14th season comes over to talk to Roman. Coming off a strong finish in the Mountain West Conference last year, 15 wins for Oosterhaus and his squad as tied for third most in a season. He was a former player at Air Force, Osterhaus. Yeah. Graduated back in 1993. One of the strongest resumes in, in school history. You now with, or excuse me, as a player with 113 combined wins as number one player in both singles and doubles during his tenure. That's now impressive. he's trying to parlay Absolutely. that into success as coach. And doing a fine job to start the season. How important in this environment, you also take into the factor, as we mentioned, Air Force coming down from the high altitude. I mean, we know that there's an excitement level as you when you guys were playing that, that sort of injects itself into it. Patience is very key on a day like today, isn't it? Oh, it, it it's everything. I mean, especially as I was just starting to say, it, it's, it's um, in the first couple of games, you're having a conversation with each other. You're feeling each other out. How you doing? How you doing? Do oh, you like this? No, I don't like that. And then, you know, you go for something that's a little bigger and it's a big, you know, kind of in your face. Here you go. But you need to feel the environment, feel how the court plays, how the other gentleman plays. And then once you see it, the weakness, open it up. Yeah, you got to go for it. Absolutely. It is the freshman, J.J. Ederbeek, serving for Navy for the set, going up against the captain, senior Jonathan Mas Mascogni. Gogni has just been unable to really find a way into this opening set. Nice deep ball there. kind of want to close this out. I got to tell you, and this may sound ridiculous, but five love is the worst lead I believe you can have. Right? I would rather be 4-3, hold and serve, break and a serve, because five love, you hold serve once, you get broken. You hold serve again, you get broken, suddenly it's 5-4. There's something psychological about the ability to come back from five love that will be detrimental to the Navy guy if, if that was to happen. You know, when I, I just... Well, you're playing almost... The, it's a cliche, of course, but nothing to lose. Because at that point, you're, it's almost a foregone conclusion. So then you loosen up a little bit, sure. don't you? Yeah. 
When yeah. it's really important too uh, for Muscogny here, you know, get on the board, and then it starts to put a little doubt into uh, into um, uh, Ederbeck's uh, thought process. Right. Can't quite find the magic there for Jonathan Muscogny, who last year was the team's most improved award winner. And he's looking to improve his game right here and get right back in the mix. And I, I guess the only time that five love is truly feeling as if it's going to go your way is if you own all 20 points to get That's to five love. Right. You're going for exactly. a golden set, maybe. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're in danger, and that's two straight games. I mean, especially losing a game at love. I mean, again, he's got a long way to go, but it just – Puts a little doubt. Can pay dividends in the, in the second and third, potentially third set. And our attention will now go to singles. Men's two competition over on court number eight. And a peek in on Arjun Kirsten of Air Force, a receiving serve from Gavin Seagraves of Navy. So, Cam, I think you had mentioned that the assistant coach at Navy, men's assistant coach, was he the same? Was he there when you were there? He was there. The first year that he was there was my junior year. Awesome. And his name is John Moreland. And I will tell you that we coined the nickname for him, J Mo. And that <laughs> was before J Lo came on the block. And it's stuck with him now, what, 24 years later? Everybody knows him only as J-Mo. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you clarified that the historical mark there. I don't want Ben Affleck calling us and yeah. calling us out for J-Lo. He's yes. got a J-Lo. J-Mo, though, supersedes all of that. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. J-Mo was born before J-Lo. <laughs> uh, these two have been just really pulling on the tug of rope. Tug of war rope here, just battling back and forth between each other. It really has been a very even match to this point between the sophomore Kirsten of Air Force and the senior Seagraves of Navy. Starting to see a number of quick errors from Air Force right now on court on uh, from Kirsten out there. Well, this is the point in the, in the match where you save something that you saw maybe earlier in the set. And you need a point now, right? You know, and this is where you play it and you pull mm -hmm. it out of your bag of tricks. Mm -hmm. There you go. Nice moving through the ball, continuing to move forward throughout that entire point from Air Force. Showed good promise as a freshman, did Kirsten. Three times named to the Mountain West Freshman of the Week after a good beginning to his career. Bad luck there. Mm -hmm. Gavin Nye's uh, service selected NFO. So be a, uh, basically goose. Oh, awesome. Heading over to set point on court 11. <laughs> Singles five and Ederbeek has been hanging around a long time trying to wrap up this set. Marched out to a five love beginning, then couldn't find his way there couple of games for Muscogee, the captain for Air Force, but here he is, the freshman, with a chance to close it out. And actually, he was able to close it out. So he did take it 6-2, the opening set. This is the opening game of set number two. Apologies for that. Just misread the scoreboard for a moment there. So your peak with a chance to get off on the right foot in set number two. Julie, Julie, when you were having set point, did you have a set play that you like to use or to close out a set or to win a point? What was what, what would you go through your mind when you played? To you know, in those important points, for me, it was 
going back and keeping it simple, not necessarily drawing back and playing just not to lose, but actually playing the simple strategy um, and going after it versus trying not to, versus just trying to keep the ball in play. So you wanted to take it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I wanted this. This was my point. I had to go all in. This is I was not giving up on this point. Yeah. yeah. Ben singles one on court seven. Uh, we peek back in on Froman and Panyan. And it is a set point for the cadet. And that goes long. And Nick Roman, the junior from Sudbury, Massachusetts, finds his way to a one set lead. He's so fired up. Quality effort allows Air Force to move ahead up by a set on courts in men's singles one and six. Navy has their representation of taking the opening set on singles five court of Eaterbeek. We just showed you moments ago was able to take the opening set. So things continue on on this chilly and windy day in Lake Nona. Oh, wow. That was a tight. That was a tight ball there too. That was great. But to me, to your point, right? I mean, if you're playing against a good player like Sasha, you got to take it. You got to go for They're, it. The good players aren't going to give it to you. And, yeah. You know, to Air Force's credit, uh, he, he took it. Meanwhile, in men's singles play, number two court for them, Seagraves has a point away from the tie break. Navy holding the doubles point for the one love lead. That'll be the All deciding right. point in this 12th Set game. Point. Second Would you say point. a first serve here, Cam? If if I if I was playing right now. They seem would, to be a little mixed up here, guys. What's <laughs> <laughs> they're going to serve into an open. That first serve would have won him the point if that had been <laughs> exactly. appropriate. You got you know, to make that first serve. Yeah. But I, I, if I was here, I would go, you know, you have to make a first serve at Deuce. Mm -hmm. Put it in. Put pressure on him. I'll come to net. Serve and volley. Yeah. Oh, double misses fault. double fault. That's the set. And the set goes uh, to Kirsten. What happened there? Did Kirsten bait Seagraves into serving on the deuce side? I don't know if he was standing there. It looked like almost he was standing over there. And so that's where he thought that he wanted to take the point. And it looked like Kirsten decided, hey, I want oh, I deuce side. Yep, yeah. Yep. Either way, it seemed to upend the yeah. effort by the midshipman. And Air Force gives himself a terrific start over on the court. Hey, Dan Oosterhaus is, not only was he a terrific tennis player at the Air Force Academy, not only has he compiled a terrific resume as the coach of the cadets, but I'll tell you what, this guy loves this game. We had a chance to meet him uh, walking around Lake Nona last night, and he is the epitome of exposed enthusiasm. He is, yeah. Really cool guy. But just meeting him, his vibe was uh, uh, pretty great. His third visit to the USDA National Campus in the last four years and defeated Army West Point 4-2 three years ago and was all over them last year. But he has put together uh, well, a stellar career and now his 14th season in Colorado Springs. For 10, men's singles four. This is a chance for us to look in for the first time on the pair that are doing battle there. Being nice. Philip Deaton, a freshman for Air Force, versus another freshman, Herrick Legaspi. Ooh, what a lob. Great play. Oh. Great for deep forehand to set up that drop shot and way to recognize that. Well, you were alluding to it early, both of you actually, and talking about how these men's teams for both Air Force and Navy have great futures ahead of them because they're so young. Mm -hmm. And to, to that point, on courts four, five, and six right now, of the six players competing, five are freshmen, mm -hmm. one senior. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the youth is served here very well. Absolutely. And it bodes well as the programs go forward. Yep. Young team. And, you know, what's 
you are talking about Ooster House earlier, his 14th season. Kim Gidley's in her 25th season. I mean, talk about coaches that are around for a while. And prior to Ooster House, um, the coach was there, I don't know, 20, 30 years, at least, uh, even more than that, I think. So, you know, the program itself has had great success in long-term coaches, uh, not a lot of turnover. I think that's great for recruiting as well. Yeah, this is freshman on freshman right here. As mentioned, Deaton and Legaspi, and as well as freshman on freshman over on court number six. That was an incredible forehand down the line there. Oh, the Gaspy. Yeah. Wow. He's just mixing it up. Absolutely. Making balls. Yeah. Hitting I, a good, clean ball. He looks like the type of guy that just will break you down. He's putting like these, I call them investments for the future, right? Where you just keep making balls, making balls. Your opponent's just punching himself out. Mm -hmm. And he might not have won that point. He might not win this set but it'll pay its dividends come second set, third set, Absolutely, right? yep. Well, you gotta like his chances right here to win this set, because he's got set point, and it looks like he's gonna have a second serve to work with. Ah, oh, double fault. That hurts. Yeah, that stings. And we'll see if there's any residual scar tissue for Deaton, because that is it. Opening set done, Legaspi worked his way. He seemed to just elevate his game at the right time, brought the intensity, and he takes the opening set. There's J-Mo with a congratulatory fist bump. J-Mo making an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> so as it stands for the Air Force, they have the lead by a set on courts one, two, and six. For Navy, they have courts four and five in men's singles, mind you, with still the outcome on men's singles court three to be decided. We take our look there now, Waldman versus Garner, and it is a set point for the cadet. Trying to serve it out. That would be crucial here, just to give a little bit of an extra boost if Waldman's able to explode here for Air Force and get the set so that the cadets would be leaving it on four of the six courts because obviously you need four points for Air Force to be able to to move to victory. That's right, they're already down that doubles point on the men's side, so they have to get to four. Good defense from Navy there. Wow. Yeah, Gardner did well to try to stay in the point, but Waldman unrelenting as he does finish it off to take the set. And Air Force in the driver's seat. Four of the six men's singles courts belong to the cadets at this point after one set. And that bodes well for the moment, but can't take anything for granted. Not at all. And I'm going to tell you what, this is going to come down to, you know, they're going to probably end up playing out all these matches with what it looks like right now. There's a good chance of that. So great competitive matches out there. Uh, it would be nothing better than if this came down to the decided Absolutely. match, right? Absolutely. Both sides. Just a couple minutes shy of the 7 o'clock hour here on the 64-acre grounds that they call the USTA National Campus, just a brilliant facility with so much to offer. It is a public course as well, or public facility as well, so you can come in. Don't think it's only for the uh, professionals or the collegiates. Get on over here, grab your stick, and come and buy and have a hit. Let's see, get you updated on things. As we mentioned, Air Force four, uh, the four opening sets on six courts. They have the upper hand to, to this moment, with still plenty of time to go for Navy to mount some comebacks and produce just three singles victories if they. Go look in on the match between Eaterbeek and Mescogny. In the far court, the cadet from Air Force just three points away from the match.
Very Ooh, well, well constructed played. point there. Well played. You six, can feel it. Yeah, the six foot oh, captain, yeah. Mescogni, just trying to battle tough once again, but he's had his handful. The senior taking on a freshman, and the freshman's been giving the better of the match so, thus far. Absolutely. Taking them side to side, moving in with it at the same time. I mean, just Navy's playing very well. Great volley. Good play. These are pressure points. Absolutely. You know, it's it's tough. It's what was the motto that you guys had that says, you know, if you're about to lose, you just figure out a way to stay out there as long as you can. Yeah. So Coach Gidley, again, another one of my, I I wrote Coach a note with about 20 things on it of things that I still use today, and one of them was play for time. You're down. You just make that points last as long as you can. You make the games last as long as you can. And it'll be match point for Navy. No, excuse me, excuse me. Air Force has a chance to break as Ederbeek closing in, but not quite there yet. That's Muscogny doing his part. I think that just missed. I think it's deuce. I think this is a match point. Yeah. So a deciding point will be a match point for the freshman who was the 2018 state singles champion at Brother Rice High School in Bloomfield, Michigan. And a real big opportunity now for Navy to jump to a two love advantage in men's action. No, just missed. That's a nice volley there. Well, tough news. Wasn't able to convert. Good news. Another match point. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's not. That, that's no, game. sorry. The yeah. turn. I'm watching that score, but forget. You got to turn the yeah. channel. Yep. Don't that's turn okay. the channel. Just turn the score. That's all right. So not quite there yet, but yeah. Ederbeek will have still a very comfortable lead to try to work with. But, you know, once you've had a, an opportunity to close it out, you're always kind of lingering there in the back yeah. of your mind. Yep. Play for, I mean, in this scenario, potentially for me, it would be play for time. Make it last as long as you can. Let's see if we can make some mistakes come out. Sure. And if, if you can, all right, that starts to chip away at his confidence a little bit, let you kind of open the door a little bit. And as We take a peek in on what's going on between Brown and of the Air Force Academy as he has himself match point. He's been thorough and pretty effective all day long thus far, has Jack Brown, who hails from Scottsdale, Arizona, the freshman, part of Squadron 18 Knight Riders, about to seal the deal. Great for serve. And the there freshman it gets it done. Well done. And Air Force is on the board in men's play as freshman Jack Brown secures a straight sets victory. And it's 1-1 after the doubles competition and the win by Brown. First singles match to finish. I actually expected probably another match to end first. And the second set on some of these have flipped and started to last a little bit longer here. A replay of match point and it's just a terrific effort. Once again, the 6-1 freshman just really looked composed from the outset. And right next door on men's singles five, the court, it's a match point in favor of Navy. Ederbeek, the freshman, hoping to close things out as he puts the ball in play. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Great first, a great second serve, getting Air Force out wide and taking advantage of that inside out or the, or, Outside edge forehand. J.J. Ederbeek gives Navy their second point as they move ahead on the scoreboard for the men's side of things. Freshman pressure. What pressure? <laughs> what a big forehand <laughs> to finish it off. That was big. Absolutely. Way to take it. What a play. 
So things continue on. Air Force hoping that Vroman in men's singles action on the, the one court for them. He's two games away from taking a straight sets win to make it two apiece, but there's still plenty to play there. Kirsten and Seagraves in a little tussle here as the cadets looking to pick up a, a second point. Not sure I would have tried to hit a drop shot, a drop shot there from behind the baseline. Might not be the best play. Wouldn't, not the ideal scenario there. <laughs> I mean, I am guilty for hitting the wrong shot at the wrong time. Quite often. Yeah, yeah. It's easier said than done. Right <laughs> up in the booth, obviously Absolutely. what he should do or what she shouldn't do. And Kirsten just, he was able to find at the end of the opening set the, the groove when it mattered most down the stretch. And he seems to be just replicating that here. Yes, and that, I mean, that first serve down the middle gave him an, gave him an offensive advantage and was able to come in and put that ball away. Screams are amplifying, huh? And I love it. Great shot. Well, I think it's safe to say that if you're in this sort of atmosphere, if it's just either men versus the men or women versus women, let alone both groups here, if you're bored, it's you. <laughs> Absolutely. You got, wrong with uh, you. you got that right. <laughs> you need to see a counselor or somebody yeah. because it's impossible not to just feel that just the excitement that's going on with everybody keeping their head on a swivel. Yes. But the action everywhere. Intense moments everywhere. Pressure points everywhere. I mean, we're trying to keep uh, fist uh, pumps uh, everywhere, and I love it. I mean, if you're just a sports or a tennis <laughs> fan, right, that, that gets no better than this. You, you get 12 of these right in a row. About to be an eruption for the cadets of Air Force if Arjun Kirsten can convert match point. Just a little it too was, greedy. Yep, that was the right shot. Yep. Just didn't quite get it up didn't, high enough. Didn't give himself enough space. Yep. But the good news, once again, as we said, it's a deciding point that is match point number two. Ooster House and the rest of the cadets in support nearby court. There we go. I believe the rule is that you have to be a half a court away to cheer. So as oh, these matches yes, start to correct. end, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll just see everybody start gravitating towards the, the matches that are unfinished. New life for Gavin Seagraves, the senior for Navy, as he saves two match points. And really, to be fair, he was sort of gifted on two tight shots from Kirsten that resulted in the break. Yeah, those last two shots that he had, he just didn't give him enough, himself enough clearance and definitely weren't shots that he was in position to miss. So probably just got a little tight. Nine-man roster in support. It's a 15-man roster for Navy in bringing down seven freshmen, a sophomore, three juniors, and four seniors. Those who are not on court are very vocal with their support. And well, there's Coach Garner walking uh, towards the camera there. Um, he really is a player's coach. And talking to him, you know, he's been in, in the tennis industry for 30-plus years, and I'm asking him about the titles that he captured at Amherst or the Patriot League titles that he's captured. And never once did he say, Yes, I've captured these titles. He said, no, my players have captured these titles. And it was just a very humble way of saying it. And, um, it's refreshing to hear that. Very refreshing. Yeah. And I like that he carries such a big squad because, you know, as a freshman at, at the Naval Academy, it's a big deal to get off the yard. Yeah. Oh, big time. Yeah. So Seagraves is already saving two match points, serving to stay in the match. Uh, 
He did a great job of saving that ball that skidded on the line. Take a lick on Seagraves trying to serve to stay in the match. Look, by the way, just catching her at the end, cheering out to her squad. She's letting everybody know she's back in it. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And that's... Navy took the doubles point. I've also picked up a singles point. Air Force getting the better on court no, on men's singles one play for their sole point thus far. That was a great play there. Seagrave seems to have been rejuvenated by the miscues in the previous game by Kirsten. Those mismatch point opportunities has really sort of put some wind in his sails. Well, you can see it when your opponent gets tight, mm -hmm. right? And when you see that, you just, if you take advantage of it, you can and change it, the match. And it does. It can change the momentum significantly. Uh-oh, that's long, though. And things a little dicey once more. How many times can you offer that little <laughs> cherry and Kirsten not accept it? Oh, boy. Match point number three for the cadet from Air Force Academy. What's the play here? First serve. Miss that volley, man, that's tough. Wow. That does not feel good there. No. I can tell you that he was in total control at that point. Oh, I thought that was I thought that was it. Mm -hmm. He played that point perfectly. Minus the last volley. And it was still above the net. I thought for a moment on the initial at real time that it was dipping below mm -hmm. the net, and that's a tough one to claim, but he just couldn't make this clean connection. Yeah. Oh, and that's going to sting. Three match points gone for Kirsten, and he'll have to serve to try to reclaim the lead. He thought he should be joining fellow cadets, two all on the scoreboard, and, and right. done with his night. What a backhand from uh, Kirsten there. I like he the ripped that. I like that play though, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Finally said enough for this. Yeah, he came in off of it. I, it was a nice deep approach. He just ripped a great forehand back at him. Sure. That's a man with a lot on his mind. And he needs to develop some tennis amnesia right now, doesn't he, for Kirsten? I mean, to forget all about what has happened thus far. Focus on the here and now. Yeah, he's he's definitely made some tight errors there. That's good for a serve. But some tight errors that you definitely beat yourself up for a little bit. It's hard not to. 
Is there a technique you, either of you used in, in a moment like that, three match points missed out on, and really it was you missing them. It wasn't that your opponent really did anything wrong or, or forced anything from you. How did you get out of those situations? I would just make sure that I focused on the on the real simple things that I could control, right? Moving your feet, setting up for the ball properly, watching the ball until contact, right? And, good, and just basically go back to your basics to make sure that uh, you don't let your nerves get the best of you. Yeah, yeah, refocusing on what your game plan is. That I mean, really the best way to be able to try and clear your mind, however. But but he's done a good job of that here to get to 40-15. Absolutely. Sorry, Camp. But yeah, but honestly, at this point in the match, right, it should be so clear what your tactics are, right? You've you've been playing this now, you know, a couple of hours. You're deep. You know exactly what you want to do when the moment comes. So you gotta just make sure that you you carry out your game plan. Takes the point at 40-15 for the sixth game. He is oh so he close once again. Three match points, and now Seagraves for the second time will serve to stay in the match. Men's four singles, Deaton and Legaspi looking like it's heading towards its conclusion quicker than anybody else and getting ever so close, but really it's nip and tuck between all of these remaining matches. Not good body language from Deaton to start here in this 10th game. Didn't like his return as he looks to break for the win. Good long point here for sure. Wow. One of the longest rallies of the day, and it was almost the tennis equivalent of patty cake early. <laughs> I mean, neither wanted to give anything to their <laughs> opponent or make a mistake, but then Deaton just turned the screw a little bit. Yeah, he started making, going side to side, gave him an angle. Deaton, a couple points away. Things starting to get, to, this is one of those situations where we're getting down to where do we turn, where do we go? <laughs> Well, especially since we're so tight in, <laughs> in points here, you know, every match is important right now. Yeah, absolutely. What we're alluding to is Deaton moves to within two points of victory and giving the Air Force a 3-2 lead. Navy is on the precipice of winning the women's competition over on court three. Chaudhry up 5-3 in the third set will serve for the match and potentially the women's victory.
Good stuff from the freshman who wraps it up. And Navy has triumphed over Air Force in the women's competition in Lake Nona. Coming down to the 5-3 freshman from Virginia, Sia Chaudhry, to put the finishing touches with that backhand. And Coach Keith Perrier has himself the victory. <laughs> Quickly back to the men's action as it is still continuing to unfold in the decisive sets. 3-2 in favor of Air Force. And over on court eight, chance to peek in on Garner, or Kirsten and Seagraves, mind you. Kirsten has already had three match points going back to the second set. And he's two points away from trying to seal it once more. Oh, did he mishit that? <laughs> it looked like a potential mishit, but. There it is. That's clutch. All right, one more Air Force. Uh oh. Well, it was a freshman one who wrapped it up. Split. A split fresh. decision. <laughs> yeah. It was a freshman who wrapped it up for the women, for Navy to get it done. It's a sophomore from Plano, Texas, with his fourth match point. Arjun Kirsten, trying to get it done for Air Force. Boom! Well, he had to wait some extra time to get it done. But, <laughs> but Argent Kirsten got it done for Air Force. And how about this? Navy wins the women's competition in the first ever encounter between the academies. Air Force, for the first time, has triumphed over Navy in the men's side. <laughs> All right. I love it. Great so stories out there, for a sure. Split decision. There will be no uh, awarding of a weekend off. That's no. unfortunate. That's unfortunate. But uh, there, there's the trophy presentation. <laughs> but what a terrific finish. And Hold as we high. mentioned, well done, Cam and Julie, we talked about the fact that this format is so fun because really it can just be mere seconds between matches ending and mm -hmm. getting it all decided. And that's exactly what unfolded. Yeah, and it's the energy and everything. It's fun to watch when one court gets done. They go on and cheer on the next one. And the energy is just, it just keeps rippling down. And that's what, I love college tennis because of that. And for Dan Oosterhaus, it was in 2005 that Air Force got off to a 14-0 start, the best start uh, in, in two decades. But now 8-1 and one to begin the spring season. What a boost for the cadets. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well, they've had a great season so far. They've beaten Rice and now, you know, unfortunately, the midshipmen. Beat Denver as well, which Denver. had never happened yeah. you know, under Oosterhaus' tenure. Uh, so unbelievable. These are stepping stones and, and just these, just the little incremental steps that let you know that things are starting to come to fruition early. And what a win. Air Force triumphant for the first time. Now, here they are, how it all unfolded on the day. But, of course, the key turning the uh, putting the circle around court number two with Kirsten winning the deciding point and if we were indoors because part of our season's indoors we just didn't have enough courts to be able to do it all at the same time so outdoors you know we would have enough courts but our schedules just didn't overlap and I think that the men's and women's teams have actually gotten closer over the years than they were while I was there Good, quick shot there. We just saw him on the left of the screen here, Lieutenant General Richard Clark, who is ecstatic.
Alma maters of both schools, beginning with the Naval Academy in blue and gold, and for the Air Force Academy, the Air Force Song. Gives you goosebumps, doesn't it? It, it still does. Yeah. Hey, you understand the magnitude of not just representing your school, but so much more as these servicemen and women bring their talents to these courts and then will go on in service of the country beyond their collegiate careers. But Today they can celebrate as athletes because it was a great effort. Air Force men victorious for the first time against Navy and in the first ever meeting between Navy and Air Force in women's competition, it was the midshipmen. So in honor of the meeting, which was really, if you think about it, on the women's side, two legendary coaches being able to square off from their respective schools in the first ever encounter between two service academies, it really set the tone for what was a terrific encounter between the two schools. Obviously, you feel for Kim Gidley, she would have liked to have gotten the victory, but the win actually goes to the man at the helm of Navy, Keith Perrier. On the men's side, oh, it sits and it feels oh so good. Dan Oosterhaus is going to have a smile for the next week that will just be, <laughs> you won't be able to remove it. And the coach joins us right now. Coach, you were very excited for this contest last night when we happened to run into each other. We had the chance to speak to you. You just seem to have an overwhelming optimism and feeling that, you know, it was about time somebody took Navy down in this battle. Well, yeah, th thanks for the USTA um, and you guys for putting this together. It was an, just an unbelievable battle. You know, I was so proud of how our guys fought back from losing a really tough doubles point. You know, we lose in a breaker. Um, I thought we were we had some, some pretty good uh, momentum in the doubles for about 30 minutes there, and the Navy took it from us. And uh, I was just so proud about how, how our guys fought back in those first sets in singles. Wow. Yeah, for Coach, as, as you know, I mean, there, there's something's going on. You've done something right, even with a very youthful and young squad. You have gotten off to a fantastic spring season. Arguably, I, I think it's the best start in almost two decades now that you've improved to 8-1. and one. Uh, What is it that is already starting to coalesce about this team that you brought together that is produ producing these remarkable results? Yeah, you know, I'm just I'm looking over at my guys right now, and it's it's all them. You know, they just love to compete for each other. Every team that we've played this year with that record is has been a very good team and we've been in battles from the first match of the year and so these guys were tested you know this wasn't the first time that we've lost the doubles point or you know been in third sets when the match was on the line so they just they absolutely love fighting for each other and I, I hope that came out um, to everybody here that was watching the match because you know they were they were never going to give up and all the credit man to Navy they just never went away either it was an unbelievable battle uh, Coach Cameron Lickle here. Uh, congratulations. I just have one question for you. Yeah. What was the color of the Gatorade that got poured <laughs> on your head? <laughs> you know, I, I, I fell for that. They were like, hey, Sarah wants to take a picture. Can you guys stand right here? I had no idea it was coming. Um, that was the first first time the guys ever got me like that. So, yeah. <laughs> How cool. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get them back next week. Congratulations. That's Congrats, a, Coach. Yeah, congratulations, Coach. Thank producing you. a victory for the first time beat Navy right. in six decades. <laughs> you finally got it done. So, congratulations to your squad and continued success down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. And so from the head coach at Air Force to the man who sealed the deal, he clinched it when it all came down to it, the sophomore who hailed from Plano, Texas, Arjun Kirsten. There he is. Arjun, we got to ask you, man, now that you can say, breathe the sigh of relief, you had three match points much earlier. <laughs> How did you hold your, how'd you hold your nerve down the stretch to be able to get it done in three? Uh, honestly, it's just my teammates. Um, looking at them on the sideline and looking down the row to my right, um, just seeing everyone fight and cheer for me, be super positive about it, I, that kept me going for sure. 
Uh, do you, do you, uh, it's Cameron Lickle here. How many match points did you have against you? Do you know? Um, I, I don't. Or sorry, not match points. Not, uh, or how many match points did you have until you were able to close it out? Do you know? No, I, I mean it was probably four or five. Yeah. I, I would I would assume because uh, of the second set as well, but. You know, when I got up 5-2 in that third, uh, I was just looking over my teammates like, no way. We say that. We're just, no way. No way we let this one go. So, Thank you. Well, well done. I mean, congratulations to you for pulling that out. Yeah, it Thank says you. a lot to be able to get through that, uh, the disappointment of the three match points in the second set and then be able to just turn things around in a positive way. And talk about the start to the season for the Falcon and in your squad. The cadets have been really producing great tennis in the spring season now, eight and one. What do you think personally is really led to this just bursting out of the gates to such success? Yeah, it's it's multiple things. Uh, the coaches, I mean, setting up a good game plan every single week uh, in practice, knowing what we need to work on uh, that we didn't do good the week before. Um, and then the guys showing up in practice, like I said, just working hard. And then coming out here and fighting every every match day. Uh, we have each other's back uh, in squadron and, and out here on the tennis court, and, and that, that's what it is. It's just it's like a family. So. Well, congratulations in being a part of and clinching, you know, a win over Navy at sea level. Who cares about yeah. altitude? What effect does that have on Air Force? You guys came on down and yeah. you got it done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great well match. done. Go celebrate. I will. I will. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Air Force is going to be around for a little bit. We're told they're not going to leave until Monday so or late or late tomorrow. So they've got a nice day off tomorrow oh, to enjoy a little of the Sunshine State. Well, the beauty, the coaches looked out for their players, right? They set it up. They're, they're going to they're have a little time off. That's right. Enjoy a little time off of the yard and, yeah. you know, take it all in. We're done from Lake Nona. This competition between Air Force and Navy has come to its conclusion. And we'll take a look back at how the day unfolded. And we'll see you next time on College Match Day.